Hi everyone, let's see how to make and use a tree diagram for probabilities. Let's say we have a small bag, or pouch, inside of which there are seven marbles. Four of those marbles are blue, so I'll just quickly sketch those. That's one, two, three, and four. And three of the marbles are green, so I'll just add those. That's one green there, two, and three. And as an experiment, we randomly pick a marble out of the bag, and we make a note of its color. Once that's done, we put the marble back inside the bag, and pick a second marble, and again, make a note of its color. So the experiment here is picking two marbles at random, so I'll just write that, picking two marbles at random with replacement. And as we'll be seeing, the term with replacement is actually quite important, so I'll just underline that in green. All right, now let's see how to draw the tree diagram for this experiment. Here's the idea. The first marble we pick will either be blue or green, and we illustrate that with our tree diagram as follows. Starting from a point, we draw two branches, one here and one there. And at the end of each of these branches, we write the two possible outcomes for our first marble. So I'll just go ahead and write a capital B for blue and a capital G for green. To make things clear, this starting point on the far left hand side here is where we would be right before picking our first marble. When we pick the first marble, we either get a blue or we could get a green. Now that that's done, we add the probabilities of each of these two possible outcomes. And for that, remember that we have seven marbles inside our bag, four of which are blue and three of which are green. So the probability of picking a blue marble is 4 out of 7, and the probability of picking a green marble is 3 out of 7. And we write those probabilities along the branches of this tree diagram. So for blue, that was 4 out of 7, and for green, that was 3 out of 7. Done. That's it for our first marble. And in fact, I'll go ahead and write a 1 above those two possible outcomes, blue or green. We now look at the second marble, or the second event, if you wish. And let's assume for a minute that we obtained a blue marble for the first pick. Then when we pick our second marble, we can still either get a blue or a green marble. And starting right behind this capital B, we illustrate those two possible outcomes with two more branches. So that would look something like this. We'd have one branch there and another one there, where the top branch would represent a blue marble, and the bottom branch would represent a green marble. And once more, we need to write the probabilities for each of these two events. And here's where the term with replacement is important. After we picked our first marble, we put it back inside the bag. What that tells us is that before picking the second marble, there are still seven marbles inside the bag. As a result, the probability of picking a blue for the second marble won't change at all, nor will the probability of picking a green. So the probability of picking a blue will still be 4 out of 7, and the probability of picking a green will still be 3 out of 7. And we write those probabilities along the two branches. So that's 4 out of 7 there, and 3 out of 7 there. Now let's go back. If we had picked a green marble first, then following that we could, once more, either pick a blue or a green marble. And we add that to our tree diagram by drawing two branches starting right behind the green like i just done there. And again, that could either be blue or green. And as we just said, because we put the first marble back inside the bag, the probability of picking a blue marble will still be 4 out of 7, and the probability of picking a green will still be 3 over 7. And that's the second marble taken care of. And in fact, I'll write a little 2 above all those possible outcomes. And as such, we've now drawn the tree diagram for this experiment. And one thing it allows us to do is to list all of the possible outcomes of the experiment. To list them all, we can start on the far left-hand side of the tree and move our way along the different branches to see all of the possible outcomes. So let's go ahead and list them. Moving along the top branch, we could have a blue marble followed by a blue marble, and we write that at the top here. Indeed, we can write blue followed by blue, or blue and blue. If you haven't seen this symbol before between the two Bs, don't worry. You can think of this as the mathematical way of writing AND. So when I write this, it means blue and blue. The next possible outcome would be blue followed by green. 
So that would be the event blue and green. We carry on. Say we had picked a green marble first, then we could follow the path green and blue. So that would be the event green and blue. And finally, we could also have picked a green followed by a green. So that would be the event green and green. And we've now listed all of the possible outcomes of this experiment. But on top of allowing us to list all of the possible outcomes of this experiment, this tree diagram also allows us to quickly calculate the probability of each of these possible outcomes. And here's how that works. To calculate the probability of picking a blue and a blue, starting on the far left hand side of the tree diagram, we follow the branches that lead to blue followed by blue. And on those branches we come across two probabilities, namely 4 over 7 and 4 over 7. And the probability of this event equals to the product of those two probabilities. In other words, we can go ahead and state that the probability of getting blue and blue is equal to 4 over 7 times 4 over 7. So I'll just write that. That's 4 over 7 times 4 over 7. And that's equal to 4 times 4 over 7 times 7 which equals to 16 over 49. And we can do that for each of the outcomes of this experiment. And in fact, let's go ahead. The probability of picking a blue for the first marble and a green for the second will be 4 over 7 times 3 over 7. So we write that. That's the probability of getting blue followed by green. That's equal to 4 over 7 times 3 over 7. Remember, all we're doing is multiplying the probabilities that we come across as we go from the beginning to the end of the tree diagram. So that will equal to 4 times 3 over 7 times 7, which equals to 12 over 49. We carry on for the other two possible outcomes. We have a green followed by blue, and we write the probability of getting a green marble followed by a blue marble equals to 3 over 7 times 4 over 7, since those are the two probabilities we come across along that path. So that's 3 over 7 times 4 over 7. And that's equal to 3 times 4 over 7 times 7, and that's equal to 12 over 49. Finally, for the bottom path here, green followed by green, we have two probabilities, 3 over 7 times 3 over 7. And so we can write the probability of getting a green followed by a green equals to 3 over 7 times 3 over 7. That's equal to 3 times 3 over 7 times 7, and that's equal to 9 over 49. And we're done. What this tree diagram has allowed us to do is list all of the possible outcomes of this experiment, as well as quickly calculate the probability for each of those possible outcomes. So for instance, say we're interested in the probability of picking two green marbles, well that corresponds to this outcome here and the probability is 9 out of 49. Or the probability of picking two blue marbles, so that would be B and B, and the probability is here, that's 16 over 49. Of course, at times questions will get trickier. For instance, we may be asked, what's the probability of obtaining exactly one blue marble? And looking at the different outcomes of the experiment, we can see that there are two outcomes which have exactly one blue marble. And so how do we deal with that? Well, in the next tutorial, we use the same experiment as well as the tree diagram we just drew and its probabilities to answer questions like that. So do make sure to watch that. But before watching the next tutorial, I would strongly recommend to try and reproduce this tree diagram as well as the probabilities starting from this diagram here. That should serve as really good practice. And there we have it. That's it for this tutorial.